This is Five Live Formula One with Jenny Gao. Hello and welcome to the last qualifying of the season from Abu Dhabi. It's a beautiful evening here. It's been a very hot and sticky day, but now... The sun has, well, it's probably just about setting, actually. Um, to my right, the beautiful hotel illuminated in purple lights tonight, which the cars will go under. And 20 drivers waiting to set the fastest time to see who will start in pole position. Jack Nichols will be our lead commentator. And Jack, it's that time of night when the party begins to start. There are balloons aloft over some of the yachts and boats that are here in the harbour. There's a real kind of party feel and it's the last race of the season, so why not? Why not indeed? Final qualifying session of the year. Qualifying's have been a lot of fun this season, so I'm looking forward to this, even if um, the Red Bulls seem a little bit favourite, but yeah, it's I, we, Sam and I were just talking about it actually. I, I do quite like Abu Dhabi, even though I... <laughs> don't <laughs> like so it gracious. no but even though look, the track is not great and it's not the great place to end the season and all of that it's a nice vibe isn't it it's a nice vibe it's a very nice vibe. There are lights and little streams of laser beams going through the sky. Everyone's very relaxed and chilled. There's not the tension that there was last year when we had the cliffhanger of the final race of the season, deciding the championship and all of the drama that went with that. But Sam Bird, Formula E racing driver, I think everybody has kind of got used to this closing out the season now. It happens every year, doesn't it? So, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> this um, is the 14th Grand Prix here in Abu Dhabi. It's not absolutely. always been the season closer in that in that uh, number of races, but now it kind of it's it's earned its place as the season closer potentially. I think it has. Yeah, I think that this is it. it feels strange when it's not at Abu Dhabi now. I think it's a great place to host a season finale. I think the infrastructure at Abu Dhabi is superb. It's it's a very modern, high-tech circuit. I, I love the fact that it's a night race as well. Um, you know, it used to feel weird if it wasn't in Brazil. Now it would feel weird to me that it's not in Abu Dhabi. I don't, I, it's not a great place to end the season for me, even though I'm liking the vibe and stuff. We've, you never get a good race in Abu Dhabi. Last year's <laughs> last year. Oh, hang tomorrow on, and hang listen. on a second. Hang on. No, I'm up for one, but last year's was was nothing. Last year's was not a good race. Until if it hadn't been for that late safety car, Hamilton was winning by a mile. You sounded like you were gonna have a Connery. On yeah, the yeah, last yeah, yeah. Lap. But that's because of all everything that happened, because Latifi hit the Latifi doesn't hit the wall. It's another terrible race to end the season in Abu Dhabi. I'm not a big fan of it as the season finale. <laughs> Fair enough. <laughs> well, qualifying will get underway in just a couple of minutes' time. Max Verstappen with probably the advantage, and Sam Bird, this is a track which is pretty difficult to overtake on, so the fight is going to be pretty intense uh, this evening, this afternoon. It is going to be fierce. The person that I think is going to be most up for it this afternoon, Jenny, is Max Verstappen's teammate, Sergio Perez. He's the guy that has to really try and dominate this qualifying session. He has to put a clear daylight between himself and Ferrari's Charles Leclerc on the grid to try and ensure he gains the the role of vice champion in, in this year's World Championship. Yeah, they're level on points, aren't they, at the moment, going into this final round. And um, it's, I mean, it's one of the battles out there to be decided. We're still looking at whether it's going to be Alpine or McLaren uh, to take a higher position in the championship. It's still between Ferrari and Mercedes as to who finishes second in the Constructors' Championship. So even though, you know, the title challenge is done and dusted, there are still some interesting battles and some pretty personal battles out there as well. And Ferrari not really finding great form so far this weekend. They'll be hoping for better, but cars about to go out on track. We'll give you an opportunity to sink. And Jack Nichols for the final time this year, it's qualifying. And for the final time in a few people's careers, potentially it's qualifying. Mick Schumacher, Sebastian Vettel, uh, Nicholas Latifi, all about to start what could be their final qualifying session. And the session is about to get underway in 10 seconds time. Nobody out on circuit just yet, obviously, but it doesn't sound like anyone's queued up at the end of the 
pit lane either, but everybody is in position and ready to go. A reminder, the first session is 18 minutes long and the slowest five will get eliminated. If you're syncing up, we've got 17 minutes and 55, 54, 53 seconds on the clock and straight out goes Nicholas Latifi. He's being followed by Yuki Tsunoda in the Alpha Tauri. Pierre Gasly heading out as well. The Aston Martins of Sebastian Vettel and Lance Stroll leaving the pits. Schumacher in the house. Quite a lot of action then. Everybody straight out onto the circuit or certainly the sort of slowest four teams, I would suggest, are, uh, are straight out and, and ready to get some running in. And track evolution, very strong in Abu Dhabi. So you always want to be the, the last car out there on the circuit I would suggest at the at the end of the, the session anyway we've already got some side-by-side -side action coming down into the hairpin at turn five and uh, it's the two Williams the two Haas the two Aston Martins and the two Alfa Tauris who've gone out on circuit and uh, Norbert Vettel is getting a round of applause in the Aston Martin garage his why not? Vettel's father why not yeah why not but uh, Norbert did a bit of race not a lot i think he did no racing but i remember once watching him race in the uh volkswagen scirocco cup at the nurburgring a few years ago and he was miles off the pace i don't think he's actually done much racing in his career norbert vettel but he did this uh yeah scirocco cup that they used to have some celebrity you know guest entrance in and he was absolutely nowhere but very you know nice man and uh, his son's last qualifying session. Nicholas Latifi is going to be first across the line in the Williams. Got quite a lot of battling for position between the Alpha Tauris and the Aston Martins. Not really sure why they're getting quite so uh, jumbled up back there, but they, but they are, and they're all trying to make a little bit of a gap now, cruising around very slowly. Track temperature's 34 degrees, and it was 45 uh, for free practice, so very different conditions to what we had earlier on. Absolutely, I think the tyres will be in a better window, Jack, for most of the lap. All the drivers will now be able to push and give give us a good qualifying session. Let's see who's got what it takes to get through Q1 and all the way through to Q3. 15 minutes and 35 seconds on the clock. And uh, as I say, it is Latifi who's first out on circuit, but he is slower than everyone in the first sector so far. Sonoda is quicker than Gasly in sector one and quicker than Stroll and Latifi. Uh, Latifi now coming through the middle sector, so he's the first driver to get a middle sector on the board. The sound you can hear is Sebastian Vettel making his way now down the back straight. Alex Albon through sector one is quicker than Latifi, but only by two hundredths of a second. And he went quite well, actually, in uh, free practice earlier on this morning, Jenny. Yeah, he did. There's a, certainly a confidence that he's feeling with the car, and the car seems to be performing pretty decently this weekend for him. So he was optimistic about his chances. So let's see if once again he can make it out of the first part of qualifying for the Williams team. Well, Nicholas Latifi, his teammate, is just on a 1 minute 26.8. Albin is going slower than that at the moment. Everybody uh, out on the soft tyres, of course, as we will see throughout the entirety of the, of the session and Albon has now done the fastest middle sector of anybody and they're all on brand new soft tyres here uh, Vettel right up towards the wall on the exit of turn 13 now comes into the final corner at turn 16 it's a tiny slide but not really much and he goes third fastest it's Sonoda who's quickest at the moment on a 26.1 then Stroll then Vettel, then Gasly, then Albon, then Latifi. But Schumacher now jumps up into second place in the Haas. And his teammate Kevin Magnussen is going to be there or thereabouts with Schumacher. Into the final corner now. On to the power. And he uh, only goes sixth quickest, Kevin Magnussen. So Schumacher in second. Sonoda quickest. Stroll, Vettel, Gasly, Magnussen, Albon and Latifi. The eight drivers to have set the lap time. The Ferraris have now left the pit lane and uh, we will soon see everybody else heading out there as well. I would have thought Sergio Perez has just left the pit lane too. So in the early stages, that looks uh, like a tough ask for Williams to get out of Q1. And, uh, but we've still, but they're not a huge amount behind. So they're still, they've got another couple of runs to, to try and improve. 
I'd say I'd say Albon is going to get out of Q1, Jack. I think that he's had a very scrappy last sector. Looking at sector one and sector two, they don't look bad. You know, he's he's there or thereabouts with where he needs to be to to get out of uh, Group One. It's that last sector that's letting him down a little bit at the moment. And just to cross the I's and dot the T's, no penalty for Hamilton for uh, potentially speeding under the red flag earlier on today. Uh, that was deemed not to have been um, a punishable offence, so nothing came of that. 12 minutes and 36 seconds remaining. Both of the Ferraris out there on circuit, as I say. Leclerc ahead of Sainz at the moment as they are on their outlap, just weaving past the, the Aston Martins that are going fairly slowly so i wonder if they're going to do a cool down and, and another push it feels like they'd be going a little quicker if they were returning to the pit lane not you know fully on it but we'll keep an eye out on the aston martins 12 minutes and 12 seconds to go sonoda and gasly and the alpha tauris have returned to the pit lane as has nicholas latifi in the williams but here comes leclerc now out across the line and down towards turn one in the ferrari and they've been struggling for pace this season the one lap pace uh, this season this weekend the one lap pace hasn't been too bad but the race pace was where it was particularly concerning not that they look like they're really in contention for pole anyway Leclerc through sector one does the fastest first sector of anyone and uh, he's a tenth up on Sonoda after the first sector the Aston Martins did stay out there as do the Haas drivers but it looks as though they're doing another cool down lap stroll and uh, and Vettel so that's interesting. Perez is starting a flying lap now. Yes, we are in the very early stages. Yuki Tsunoda is quickest at the moment, but the Ferraris have just gone out on circuit, as have Max Verstappen in the Red Bull. Sam Bird, the Formula E driver for Jaguar, is alongside me. Sam, this is looking like it's going to be a, a strong afternoon slash evening for Red Bull. I think that's the way it's going to pan out, Jack. I think that Sergio Perez and Max Verstappen are the two to beat this evening out in Abu Dhabi. Cooler track temperatures this evening. I think Mercedes look decent. Red Bull look a step ahead. So very early stages of the of the session, of course. Still got a long way to go before we find out who's on pole position in about uh, 50 minutes' time. And uh, it looks most likely, Steve, that it'll be Max Verstappen. But long way to go. Stranger things have happened. Across the line comes Leclerc, does a 1 minute 25.211. And Perez is going quicker than that. Verstappen is going quicker than that as well in the first sector. The sound you can hear is Perez coming into the final two corners now. Taking so much speed into turn 16. Gets it out across the line. Oh, and he goes quicker than Leclerc by four tenths of a second. And Verstappen is going faster still. He's coming through the middle sector split now. And compared to his teammate Sergio Perez, Verstappen is only seven hundredths up. So Perez is on some good form this weekend. Here comes Lando Norris into the final corner in the McLaren. He cuts the timing beam and it is third fastest for Norris. Verstappen still out there and still improving. Hamilton and Russell are quite a way away in sector one. Three tenths. Hamilton is slower than Verstappen in the first sector. Bit of traffic here for Verstappen, but it gets out of the way mostly coming into turns 15 and 16 and Verstappen goes quickest by only six hundredths ahead of Sergio Perez but Russell is half a second down after the middle sector and Hamilton doesn't look like he's in the fight either nine minutes and 20 seconds to go now track limits are being monitored as there's a yellow in sector three oh it's gone in again if if track limits are being monitored at turn five I think Sergio Perez might have to go again just to make sure because I'm not sure that he was fully inside the white lines on the exit of turn five on his lap. So Norris has gone fourth quickest. Russell now goes fourth quickest. So Norris drops down to fifth place. Russell eight tenths away from Max Verstappen. Those are new tyres for the for the Mercedes pairing. So that's a real no pace at all scenario. To be eight tenths off and to be three tenths off the Ferraris and the Ferraris are half a second off. That is quite something. Uh, just having a look at Charles Leclerc coming down into turn five. Had a couple of goes at getting it turned in and then all over the curb on the exit as well. But this is a, a real domination. And Perez um, Leclerc might have just got done for track limits there. I'm pretty sure he, he will do, to be honest. It looked as though he was, well, not all four wheels off him. Maybe he just kept the front left on, maybe. 
Maybe. Oh, yeah. We'll see. That, that, that looked like very close to, to track limits, didn't it, Jack? Perez pits. And Sainz goes up into third. So Carlos Sainz gets ahead of Leclerc by a couple of tenths. You have to check my headrest. I think it's broken. Understood. So Verstappen thinks his headrest is broken. Um, so the team will have a look at that when he returns to the pit lane. So the order, with everyone having set a lap time bar Fernando Alonso, is Verstappen, Perez, Sainz, Leclerc, Russell, the top five, Norris, Hamilton, Ocon, Ricardo, Sonoda, the top ten. Joe, uh, Magnussen's just jumped up into 11th place. Joe, 12th. Stroll, 13th. 14th for Vettel. 15th for Schumacher. Eliminated as it stands, Gasly, Albon, Bottas, Latifi, and Alonso. But uh, that is subject to change because Gasly and Alonso are both on laps now. In fact, here comes Pierre Gasly. Currently 16th quickest in the Alpha Tauri. His teammate Yuki Tsunoda is 10th fastest. Gasly comes across the line and jumps up to 11th. So slightly behind his teammate Sonoda still. Alonso, on the other hand, goes up to 12th. So not a huge lap for uh, Fernando Alonso. Slower than his teammate Esteban Ocon. It means that in the drop zone now are Vettel, Schumacher, Albon, Bottas and Latifi with uh, the front runners sort of in the pits and everyone else will return to the pits in a moment and then we'll go again. But you know, not huge speed for Fernando Alonso. Just getting a replay of him coming through turn nine and whoa had a big big slide there did well to catch it and that would explain a bit of time loss oh that'll be a few tenths because he's had to really come out the throttle Mate. just mate yeah <laughs> i don't know i don't know whether that's mate because of the oversteer i think that will be mate because of the traffic um there was a car in front of him by a second and a half two seconds jack and you know, the turbulent air coming off the back of that car could have disturbed his car going through mid to exit. Six minutes and eight seconds to go. Jenny Gow's in the pit lane. Yeah, plenty of cars now coming back into the pit lane as well. Lewis Hamilton just being asked to get um, onto the weigh scales here and the weigh bridge. So they weigh the car with him in it. And then all of the mechanics come up and uh, they just wheel him back down to the Mercedes garage. The first of the garages that you come to when you go down the pit lane and it's worth bearing in mind that for the first time in what nine years next year they will not be the first garage <laughs> they will be the red bull team that have the first garage because they'll be first in the constructors championship and i wonder how much taking uh, getting used to that will take because it's it, you know we we do see incidents especially in testing of drivers going to the wrong garage just because they're so used to the kind of muscle memory in their brains going okay i'm the fifth garage along the line you know first is easy isn't it <laughs> yeah, yeah. well, not for Liam Lawson, though. He, uh, he got caught out yesterday, didn't he, when he came into the pits and was surprised at how, obviously, they were second, but he was surprised at how early he had to pull into the to the garage in the Red Bull team. So Alonso returns to the pit lane. At the moment, uh, eliminated would be Vettel, Schumacher, Bottas, Albon and Latifi. So the three drivers in their final race would all be out in Q1. Five minutes to go in the session. But I think we could see some improvements further back down there. Uh, Ricardo's only two tenths off Lando Norris. It's, but, but it is quite a big gap from Gasly in 11th place. There's four tenths to Stroll in 15th. So it's it's not crazy tight for that uh, for that sort of elimination zone. So yeah, the 13th downwards all feel quite um, like they're in danger. This next run, Jack, normally picks up by around that margin. You know, everybody finds three or four tenths on this very next run that we're about to see in Q1. This is really, really important for the likes of Ricardo, Ocon, Hamilton, Sonoda, Gasly. They've got to get this right. Because you never know, Vettel, Schumacher, Stroll, they, they, could, they could pull out a great lap and all of a sudden some fancied names will be dropping out. Less than four minutes to go. The Mercedes look like they're going to go out again. Hamilton is ready. Russell is ready. Off go the blankets. And it is uh, the same set of tyres for George Russell as he joins the queue heading down towards the end. Uh, Verstappen's gone out again as well on a used set of tyres, but it'll be new sets for most of the midfield and lower midfield runners. Three and a half minutes on the clock. Again, Vettel, Schumacher, Bottas, Albon and Latifi, the drivers currently that would be eliminated. And Latifi once again is first out on the on the circuit. Three minutes and 15 seconds to go. Everybody very, very slow coming out of the 
out of the pit lane to try and give themselves a bit of space. They must be doing about 15 miles an hour through there. It's the two Ferraris are yet to leave the pit lane. Same is true of Ocon and Sonoda, but I think, I'm sure they will be leaving the pits. Yeah, there goes Sonoda and uh, Ocon, I'm sure, will leave imminently. Maybe the Ferraris won't leave at all, or maybe they'll just save it a little bit and go out later. Verstappen went out very early compared to everybody else, but he's quickest at the moment, ahead of Perez, Sainz and Leclerc. But it's all about getting through in the top 15 on this particular run. Ocon has now left the pit, so it's just the two Ferraris that are left in the pit lane. Mick Schumacher currently 17th, two hundredths away from Lance Stroll. So it's going to be a really big and tight fight to try and get out. I think the, the eliminations will come from Aston Martin, Haas, Alfa Romeo. But which combination of drivers? That's going to be the question. Track limits are going to be crucial. No one actually got their lap time deleted for track limits in the end. Jenny? Yeah, just having a look at Ferrari. There's a lot of pressure on that team this weekend. Rumours circulating that Mattia Bonotto team principal might well be out at the end of this season. But I wonder why they're doing something totally different to everybody else once again and they're staying and remaining in the garage yeah they obviously feel they haven't got much to to learn by just going out on a used set of tires for 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 no reason i suppose um vettel then already almost two tenths up on stroll in sector one so good first sector that from sebastian vettel a 17.5 we'll see whether that's just the the track evolution joe is going to be the next man to set a first sector time and the Alfa Romeo driver does a 17.6, so he does improve, but it's not enough at the moment uh, to be quicker than Stroll, even though Joe is ahead. So a reminder, the eliminated drivers, Vettel, Schumacher, Bottas, Albon, and Latifi. Those are the five that will fall out at the moment. There's cars stopped on the, uh, on the run towards the final corner. I think that was Verstappen, who's absolutely stationary uh, just before the final corner. So that was quite an odd thing to see, as everybody tried to get a little bit of traffic. Uh, or get rid of their traffic and get a little bit of clear air. Uh, so Vettel's first sector is still very good. It's two tenths quicker than Schumacher, three tenths quicker than Bottas. Albon's first sector is pretty decent here as well. So everybody really is improving. There's uh, Vettel having to weave his way through a lot of traffic in the final couple of corners. He was on a good lap here, Sebastian Vettel. Keeps it within track limits and he jumps up to fifth place. That's a pretty decent lap from Sebastian Vettel in his final qualifying session. Let's see what everybody else has got in their locker. Uh, Joe is going to be the next across the line I think Latifi jumps up into 14th position so I don't think that'll be enough for the Canadian Joe comes through now he goes up into ninth place slower than Sebastian Vettel so that's a good lap from him Latifi is going to be knocked out Alonso needs to get a good lap in but he's not done a personal best in the first sector obviously he had that slide earlier on Schumacher jumps up into 10th place Gasly is about to come through in 14th position. Stroll goes ahead of him. Gasly's down to 15th. Now he comes through, does Gasly, and he only stays 15th, doesn't improve. Gasly's going to be in big trouble in the Alpha Tauri, and uh, Albon can only go 17th. Gets ahead of Latifi. Bottas comes through. He goes up to 16th, so still Gasly is hanging on. It's going to be Gasly or Alonso. I think Alonso's in big, big trouble here because he's not improving on this lap. Comes through the middle sector now, Fernando Alonso. It's a 37-0. He might even have backed off on this lap. He's losing so much time and I don't think Alonso is going to make it out of the first part of qualifying. Here comes Kevin Magnussen now. Out across the line in the Haas. Pole position last time. He gets up to 14th. So Gasly is eliminated. Alonso is finding time now in the final sector. He is going a little quick but he needs to be ahead of Yuki Tsunoda, but Tsunoda's improving, so Magnussen could get pushed back into the drop zone. Here comes Alonso, and he gets up to 14th, but that immediately becomes 15th because Tsunoda goes up into 10th, but he does make it through, Alonso. Alonso threw him 15th, 16th for Gasly, uh, sorry, 16th for Magnussen, 17th Gasly, 18th Bottas, 19th Albon, 20th Latifi. That's a, this is a bad weekend for, for Alpine. They've been a bit inconsistent this year at times, but Alonso making it through by the skin of his teeth there. Oh, I didn't expect him to get through there, Jack. I mean, no. the, 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 the mini sectors were looking weak as we see a replay of the, the horrendous traffic Sebastian Vettel had to get through. I mean, 
there's going slow and then there's going slow. We see that both Alpines and an Alfa Tauri virtually stopped with a corner and a half to go. I mean, is we don't really like to see that, do we, Jack? That's that's too much. Ocon was absolutely stationary, like completely stationary. And he'd already, uh, the team had already had a word about that earlier on um, in free practice three. And there was a moment with Russell and... Don't know what that Red Bull was doing, but it was dangerous going so slow. Russell and Hamilton had to take evasive action around a Red Bull too, but Magnussen eliminated in 16th, 17th Pierre Gasly, 18th for Bottas, 19th for Albon, 20th for Nicholas Latifi. Uh, ben says Seb should have announced his retirement in 2014 and just carried on. Absolutely, he's a changed yeah. man. I, absolutely. I mean, he's driving. Uh, that was inspired stuff, especially to be so brave in the final sector. Seeing all those cars nearly stopped. Bottas Radio. And unfortunately, that's P16 for us. We are out of Q1. Tires didn't work in the beginning of the lap. It's a low temperature with the Q. So Bottas saying he'd lost the, the tire temperature. Yeah, the other the other person that's obviously out of a job and, and has done an amazing job in that qualifying is Mick Schumacher up in P11. Really strong. <sighs> I still feel a bit sorry for, for Mick. I think he was right on the cusp of keeping his drive for for me for, for for my money but uh it will be hulkenberg in in the Haas next year who i think is great don't get me wrong but schumacher was so close i think, I think for me from the outside i don't know what it's like inside at Haas, but i almost feel like gunter steiner and the top brass that team had made up their mind on him a long long time ago you know when for instance when the crash happened at monaco i think the writing was on the wall mm. after monaco it's just taken this long to announce it it kind of didn't matter what he did he would have had to have done something spectacular against magnuson to keep his job after what happened at the beginning of the year so check a flag out a reminder magnuson gasly bottas alban and latifi eliminated frustrating for valtteri bottas jenny yeah, really frustrating, especially as his teammate did so well in that session. Joe managing to get the car up to P9. So a real split garage for Alfa Romeo, who are hoping to get both cars through to, through to Q3. And the points really are tight when it comes to the sort of the bottom half of the the table. And I know that we're, you know, we're battling between Ferrari and Mercedes for P2, and there's 19 points between them. But if you go down to, towards the lower end of the table, well, 55 points for Alfa Romeo, 50 points for Aston Martin. So that's a real healthy battle between those two. And then you shuffle down a little bit more, and it's Haas with 37 points, and Alfa Tauri with 35, Williams on eight. There's a huge amount of money at stake for these championship places, and Bottas must be feeling... Oopsie, I'm just in the way of a driver. I'll stand outside the way. Uh, he must be feeling very frustrated about that. Um, the, the tire, he just said, didn't he, the tyres just didn't switch on. Yeah, frustrating. Uh, <laughs> Anthony says, Seb should have announced a sabbatical and come back in 10 years' time. We're still waiting for Mika Hakkinen to return after all. It's true, it was just a sabbatical, wasn't it, for Hakkinen? But uh, never came back. Um, has done some other races. Did he go and do DTM, I think, for a for a bit oh Hakkinen was superb in DTM yeah oh, he was amazing in DTM won a load of races did he I didn't yeah. really realise that because a lot of name, F1 name drivers another... when they went to DTM they were a bit uh, like John, cool thud wasn't John Lacey great, was okay in it you did know. he go to DTM yeah wow. John Lacey was in DTM yeah can you name any others Ralph Schumacher did a bit didn't he Ralph Schumacher Frenson Heinz Al Frenson well done yeah I'm Anymore? out now. Yeah, I'm out as well. That's that's about as much as we. Pascal know. Verlein won DTM before joining. Yeah, but Paul DiResta. Yeah, DiResta went. Yeah, but that was before. That was yeah. prior. You, you've just named two people prior to. Okay. I'm talking about the other way. Anyway, the must moving on. This. Uh, Schumacher, then eleventh uh, quickest, Jenny. Yes, and as you said, he did a good job out there today. And, and I also agree with you, Jack, that it's. I, I feel sad for him and a bit disappointed because I think he, he's a, he's been a slow starter in every championship he's done. It's always taken about a year and a half to really start pushing on. Um, the crash in Japan just after free practice one, uh, when the flag had been shown already, that, that was a clumsy one and probably 
didn't help his cause. Um, however, Toto Wolff was asked today in the press conference if he thought that Mick Schumacher might become the reserve driver with their team. Um, and he said he'd be a very good fit. And obviously the team have a great bond with the Schumacher name. Michael Schumacher, his father, closing out his career with the team. Um, so I think Toto Wolff replied that they haven't had that conversation yet with Mick and um, Sabine, his manager. But, but I think there is a deal there to be done. And I think Mick would be absolutely perfect in that role as reserve and development drive for Mercedes and then you never know you know you never know what comes of that yeah uh, I mean yeah I mean obviously the, the problem the, the, the crashes are one thing and they're the sort of high profile things for Mick but we're sort of led to believe that ultimately Haas don't particularly believe that he's quick enough is fundamentally what it what it what it kind of comes down to and that Hulkenberg will score them more points over the course of the season, I think is what it kind of comes down to. And it, honestly, it's quite difficult to argue with that logic. But it's just a, a shame because he was showed, uh, you know, I, I was always a bit sceptical about Schumacher's junior career, broadly speaking. Like, it, it, it wasn't, it didn't feel particularly impressive. It didn't feel Leclerc, Norris... Russell sort of vibes even though he won the championships it wasn't in the same manner but I could I, I, I felt think one you're more doing him a bit of a disservice there he's gone out and he's won Formula 3 then he's gone out and he's won Formula 2 he won Formula 2 but taking no pole positions yeah, but, but that's where you want to see a bit of pace I think still a problem okay copy the brake is still a problem says uh, Hamilton but he did score more points than everybody else, Jack, and that's what a championship is all about. Would you prefer somebody to score a load of pole positions or to win a load of races and win a championship? You do both. That's when you're good. <laughs> you know what I mean? No, I'm not. I, I know that's. I'm not even. I'm not being facetious. Like you know what I mean? That's uh, yeah, what. Yeah, no, I I completely understand. But in his defence, he he did do what he was supposed to do, and that was win championships. Now, I think he still would have got to Formula One if he hadn't have won those championships uh, you know and that, that that's nothing against him that's just the name that he's got can carry a lot of weight being as his dad is one of if not the greatest of all time um, you know but it, it hasn't worked for him uh, at Haas and, and he finds himself without a race seat for next year Robert Kubica did DTM after F1 apparently Alan McNish did DTM yep yes after yes, F1 yes Alex Alban last year did yeah. DTM yeah, I mean, it's, it's DTM. It's not it's, DTM anymore. It's DTM, yeah. so it's, it's a GT3 car. Yeah. Right. Enough of DTM. We have got 12 and a half minutes on the clock in Q2. And uh, currently, only Russell and Hamilton are on laps in the Mercedes. And they are out again on the same set of tyres that they were on at the very start of Q1. So they've now done seven or eight laps on these tyres. So... Not expecting this to be the big lap, but they're very keen to, to save tyres, aren't they? The fact that they've run the whole session so far on just one set. Yeah, absolutely. I think they're just getting an eye in, getting a, a feeler of what the track's like. Lewis is lacking a little bit of front bite from the front end. Um, the rear's also squirming around a bit on the exit. The tyres just lost that that last few percent of grip that you need in order to go very, very quick. And, and that equates to a few tenths of a second to lap. Across the line comes Hamilton, a woman at 25.7, and uh, that is a tenth or so slower than he managed in the first part of qualifying. Russell's going quicker than Hamilton currently. Into turn 16, on the power, out across the line, and Russell goes quicker than Hamilton by four tenths of a second, and that's a couple of tenths quicker than he managed in the first part of qualifying. So good effort there from, from George Russell. On a 1 minute 25.363 on those older tyres. So those are the only two drivers to have set a lap time so far. Everybody else is out on circuit now. Daniel Ricciardo just leaving the, the pits. Um, it's new tyres for Norris. Verstappen and Perez going out on a new set of tyres. Everybody else going out on a, on a used set. So that's interesting from, from Red Bull. And... We will see what whether we get quite as much traffic this time around as well, because uh, I don't, traffic here never really 
it's not like a Monza where oh it's always a disaster because you want to get the slipstream but everybody was very very slow in those final sectors in order to 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 get some space even now we've got Hamilton going side by side with Charles Leclerc I think the Mercedes cars want to get on with it or in fact no well now they're coming back into the pit lane aren't they but um a lot of cars will take their time in this sector. A car like the Mercedes will want to get on with it just a little bit more. We heard Valtteri Bottas complaining of this traffic and saying it really cost him time, especially in sector one. So Leclerc coming into the final corner. Seventh and tenth in the last two races for Leclerc. Ten minutes to go, and he comes charging down towards turn one. Swings it into the left-hander. Back on the power. Nice and neat and tidy through that first corner. The sound you can hear is the Ferrari engine coming down into turn five, and he's a quarter of a second up on Russell after the first sector. Carlos Sainz, his teammate, is pretty much identical in that first sector, and they are both quicker than Sebastian Vettel. Norris is even quicker than the Ferraris, but he is on new tyres, Lando Norris. The Ferraris are on used tyres. Nine minutes and 20 seconds on the clock, so that'll be why they... Uh, stayed in the garage for the second part of or for the second runs in Q1 would be to give them just a little bit more life in the tyres for this first run uh, Vettel goes second fastest three tenths slower than George Russell and a tenth quicker than Lewis Hamilton but again he's on a no he's on a used set actually Sebastian Vettel not quite as old as Russell and Hamilton's but still a huge set nevertheless so another good lap from Sebastian Vettel Ocon now goes up into second place and He's on a used set also. Uh, Joe comes through to go eighth fastest. Sainz has done the fastest middle sector of anyone. The Ferrari, uh, sorry, the um, Red Bulls, meanwhile, are out there on circuit. Verstappen's done the fastest first sector of this session so far. Leclerc at the top of the times, but immediately beaten by Sainz. Sainz at 1 minute 25-0. Norris goes second on a 1 minute 25-1. Then Leclerc is in third place, but Verstappen and Perez both looking quick. Verstappen with the quickest first sector, Perez with the quickest middle sector. In fact, Verstappen's middle sector was not great. Four tenths slower than Sergio Perez in the in the middle sector here. They are both on a brand new set of tyres. Perez might have the advantage. Here they come across the line and Verstappen goes fastest. Here comes Sergio Perez though, faster still by four tenths. Same tyres, all of that time in the middle sector. So maybe a mistake somewhere from, from Max Verstappen. But they're six tenths clear of Sainz and the Mercedes are going out now on a new set of tyres for Hamilton who's down in ninth position. Yeah, I think it, it's today's fight is between Sergio Perez and Max Verstappen in my opinion for pole position Sergio's putting out a, a good account of himself Jack I mean he's really taking the fight to Max Verstappen I don't think this is going to be an easy one for Max and he's making a few mistakes today really not like him as we see Charles Leclerc just having a, a late front lock up causing a bit of understeer at the end of the long back straight yep so every no one on a push lap at the moment, just getting a replay of Vettel. Again, Vettel complaining about more traffic out there, and he is uh, currently eighth quickest. So the order is Perez, Verstappen. Oh, also Ricardo. I didn't really mention it that it's quite could be Ricardo's last qualifying session in Formula One. Who knows what the future holds for him. But Perez, Verstappen, Sainz, Norris and Leclerc, the top five. And then Russell, Ocon, Vettel, Hamilton, Alonso, the top ten. Sonoda, Ricardo, Stroll, Schumacher and Joe, the top 15. Hamilton across the line now. Down into turn one. And he is on a new set of tyres here, Hamilton. So we'll see what he can do. A little bit out of sequence with everybody else. Maybe going for two laps on this tyre. Should be enough to see him into Q3. Here's Verstappen's radio. I don't know what happened. I had zero rear grip. It's so weird. So Verstappen saying he had zero rear grip and that's why he was struggling out there and is, well, he's second quickest, but four tenths off Sergio Perez, his teammate. Hamilton onto the brakes into turn six and seven. Through the left, through the right, out of the chicane and back on the throttle. We'll get his middle sector split here compared to Sergio Perez, Lewis Hamilton. 
And he is six tenths away after the middle sector on new tires. No one's got a, no one's got an answer to Red Bull here. Well, that's a, a you know a, a straight line dominated sector there, and we know that the Red Bull is strong there. But look at how the Mercedes enters the final sector. Jack. Look at how well poised it is through and out of the hotel section, flat out through this right hander and then breaking for the last corner. I think he's going to pick up some time compared to Perez as he crosses the line now. And it's down to three and a half tenths. So oh, look at this it's, smart it's, guy. We've it's got a closer. smart guy with us. Yeah, but the, the the Mercedes is good in the final sector. It's just not quick enough. It's not slippery enough in a straight line. The Red Bull with the the Honda package in the back of it really does go down down the straight. You look at terminal velocity, the end of the straight, the Merc doesn't have anything. Yeah, Hamilton went second quickest with that lap, still three and a half tenths away from Sergio Perez. And uh, Russell is on a lap currently and is similar distance away to Perez that Hamilton was after the middle sector. So he will see what he can do in the final sector here. Russell into the final two corners, turn 15, then into turn 16. Out across the line and Russell slots into fourth position, half a second away from Sergio Perez and uh, slower than his teammate Hamilton in that final sector. So the order is Perez, Hamilton, Verstappen, Russell. Ferrari's yet to go out uh, to do a, another run on new tyres, so we'll keep an eye on them when they leave the pit lane, but they're still in the pits now. They're leaving it quite late. The problem for Mercedes is going to be, look, if they, if they line up, you know, third and fourth or second and third or second and fourth to, tomorrow, how can they combat the Red Bull in a straight line because the Red Bull will always beat them in a straight line that's that's going to be the problem tomorrow with the strategy yeah absolutely Jenny's down at Mercedes yeah I am and we heard Lewis Hamilton a little earlier on saying he was still having problems with the brakes now that's to do with the temperatures and the temperature split between the different brake discs which is just a characteristic of, of these We've got three minutes and 20 seconds to go. Sergio Perez is quickest at the moment. Lewis Hamilton is second. Max Verstappen is third. But Sam Bird, it looks like really it's going to be a fight between the, the Red Bulls for pole position. It does absolutely look like a fight between Sergio Perez and Max Verstappen. They are clear of the field. Lewis Hamilton hanging on there at the moment in second place. The Mercedes looks great in, this, in the final sector of the lap, but Red Bull, I think, have got this one covered. So three minutes to go in this second part of qualifying. Full coverage on Sports Extra. Two and a half minutes to go. And uh, Jenny, did you want to, to, to finish your point? You don't have to. I mean, I kind of made it. I just stopped talking very quickly. Um, <laughs> uh, but yeah, the, 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 it's a characteristic of these brake discs that they run at different temperatures across the uh, four different wheels. So it, it's very difficult. They're finding it difficult down at Mercedes to, to get on top of that for Hamilton. Two minutes and 20 seconds to go. Hamilton's second quickest at the moment. Lando Norris. Still in the pit lane, just leaves the pit lane now, so it's going to be a real flurry. The order is Perez, Hamilton, Verstappen, Russell, Sainz, the top five. Norris, Leclerc, Ocon, Vettel, Alonso, the top ten. Eliminated as it stands would be Sonoda, Ricardo, Stroll, Schumacher and Joe with two minutes to go. And Stroll is on a push lap already. Vettel's just on the fastest first sector of anyone. Sebastian Vettel, uh, quicker than his teammate Lance Stroll by a tenth of a second in sector one. Coming through the middle sector now. Uh, Stroll is ahead of Vettel on the road. And quite often this season, Aston Martin have failed to deliver in qualifying trim. Uh, it's 36-7 uh, in the middle sector for Lance Stroll. We'll get Sebastian Vettel's time in a moment. Vettel's only four tenths down on Perez after the middle sector. So this could be a, a good run for him, and he's two tenths quicker than Stroll. So overall, he's three tenths up on his Aston Martin teammate. A minute and 10 seconds left on the clock. Vettel is currently ninth quickest. Stroll's currently 13th. Stroll now jumps up the order to eighth place as he comes across the line. Vettel is going to be next through. Onto the brakes, gets a little bit of traffic again from a Red Bull in the final corner, and he goes up to fifth. Comfortably clear of his teammate Lance Stroll, so Vettel up into fifth position. Next out of the final corner comes Schumacher, and he goes up into eighth place. So that shuffles Stroll down to tenth, and having done his lap already, he's going to be right on the bubble. 
Ocon and Alonso are pushing as a Sonoda, Ricardo and Joe, the other drivers that are currently going to be eliminated. Here comes Joe Guan Yu, Alfa Romeo driver up to 11th. He's knocked out. Slower than Stroll by half a tenth of a second. What are the... Uh, Leclerc's down in 10th place now. He's right on the bubble, but he is on a lap, Leclerc, and he's done the fastest first sector of anyone. Ocon jumps up into 6th place, so Leclerc is eliminated at the moment. Needs a neat and tidy final sector. Ricardo goes up into 8th place ahead of Norris, who's down into 9th. Here comes Fernando Alonso. He goes up into 9th. So Leclerc's dropped down to 13th place. Norris is at risk now in 10th position, but he is on a lap. Charles Leclerc has got it all sorted and goes up to 2nd fastest. Uh, only a tenth slower than Sergio Perez, so Norris is eliminated as it stands, but he is improving. Sonoda is not improving, nor Schumacher, Stroll or Joe, so I think it's going to be sort of Norris or Alonso here. Norris goes up into sixth place, Alonso knocked out down to 11. He is on a lap, he comes across the line, and it's not enough. Alonso is out. Sonoda is out, Schumacher is out, Stroll is out, Joe is out. Disappointment for Fernando Alonso. Ricardo makes it through in 10th place. Ocon 9th, Vettel 8th, Russell 7th, Norris 6th, Hamilton 5th, Verstappen 4th, Sainz in 3rd, Leclerc 2nd, Perez the quickest in that session. Vettel's on a mission. Vettel is on a mission. So is Sergio Perez, Jack. Alonso radio. Um, so Norris just pushed it out. Um, it's P11, unfortunately. It's okay. Alonso satisfied with that. It's okay. Not too annoyed. You know that that man can race. I yeah. mean, if anybody can race up the field, it's Fernando Alonso. So, okay, he's, he's qualified 11th. Um, but we know that he can score some, some valuable points for the team from there. I also think that the pressure's kind of off a little bit. You know, he knows he's leaving. I think they also know where they're going to come in the Constructors' Championship. So, uh, yeah, I think... It, it, it's not a big major problem for him as we see another lap ruined by Sebastian Vettel by the Red Bull. How is that possible? Three times in a row I get these people. I don't know. And they don't back off. It's a tenth at the last corner. Frustration for Vettel. Jenny. Just as well as three, otherwise he would have been a very angry young man. Uh, Danny Ricardo getting through into the final part of qualifying. This weekend seems to have been in a little bit of a happier place with that car. We've seen flashes through this year of times when it has come together for him, other times when it hasn't, but he hasn't got through to the final part of qualifying, I think, since Italy, if I'm right. So that's for him, that's a good confidence builder for his last time in a Formula 1 car for what could be some time, if not all time. Yeah, he's still behind Norris. I think that's the thing, is that so often this season he's been behind even when he has a better weekend in inverted commas and okay yeah in this session only a a tenth off lando norris uh or just well a tenth and a half off norris but he's still off norris okay it's not a second like it is sometimes but he's still not quite able to to beat him I, we've got to remember as well daniel came into the team as the big money signing as somebody that would lead and, and drive Lando Norris forwards when actually it turned out to be the other way around. Lando led from the front and it was Daniel playing catch-up most, if not all of the time. Now that's not why they signed him. They signed Daniel to be the team leader. And I think that's the disappointment for Zach Brown and the people that make the decisions at McLaren. So Q3 will be getting underway in about five minutes time. A reminder, Alonso out in 11th, Sonoda out in 12th, Schumacher out in 13th, Stroll out in 14th, and Joe out in 15th position as they make their way down the uh, down the pit lane to get Wade and the like. And next up, it'll be the battle for, well, the battle for pole. Are you gonna are you gonna back Perez? Oh, it's tough. It's tough. Because, because it just takes one, you know, one minute 20, what is it? One minute 24 and a half seconds of Max Verstappen brilliance to put me to shame here. Um, go on then. I'm going to say Sergio okay. Perez. Okay. I'm going to say Sergio Perez on pole position today. He's He's been driving well. 
Fernando Alonso has been eliminated along with Yuki Tsunoda, Mick Schumacher, Lance Stroll and Joe Guan Yu. And now it is going to be the battle for pole position. It looks like it's going to be a Red Bull head to head. Sergio Perez quickest in that second part of qualifying. So he is looking very, very likely to, uh, to be taking the fight to his teammate Max Verstappen for pole position. Full coverage on Sports Extra. Well, you talk about Sergio Perez, it's really interesting to watch him this weekend and the frame of mind that he has. He found Brazil a very difficult weekend. And on top of that, there was a whole shenanigans between he and his teammate with the, the team publicly saying that, you know, they've, they've shaken hands, everything's fine in the team, there's nothing going on here. They're, you know, if Verstappen needs to help out his teammate to secure second in the championship, then that's what they'll do. Christian Horner saying their primary aim this weekend is to get 1-2 in, in the Drivers' Championship, which is something that Red Bull have never done. Um, so I think Perez has come here galvanised. He's come here full of energy and full of fight, really. For Verstappen, his fight is over this season, and I just feel like Perez is energised. There's more for him to prove this weekend than there is for Verstappen to prove. Thing is, you're, so, but if I ask Sam a question about this now, you'll tell me that drivers always give the most they have 100% the whole time. So that's where that's why I find it. Um, you yes, know? yes and no. So let let's look back at Lewis Hamilton, for example. When he started winning multiple world titles, after he won the title for those first few, he then wouldn't win a race again after being being crowned world champion. I don't think Max Verstappen's like that. I just I don't think that's in his nature. Max Verstappen wants to win every single race he enters, and is furious when he doesn't. I mean, you look at the attitude and the disappointment and the anger in Brazil, for example, that guy wants to win every race that he does. And this race will be no exception. I'm sorry, I know that they might have said to the press that he's going to help, but if he can disappear out front and win the race, he will do that 100%. Yeah. The other, the other thing is here, and this is the sort of, the, this is the odd scenario that we've ended up in, is Verstappen can't, help Perez really there's not a scenario where he can help Perez because in he would have he could have helped Perez in Brazil by giving him some more points but here the only way Perez can beat Leclerc is by finishing ahead of him and so Verstappen swapping places with Perez if he's ahead of him on the road is irrelevant there's not a scenario that that actually helps Perez so they've ended up in this scenario where oh yeah Max will help Perez in Abu Dhabi, but he but he can't like he physically can't. There's no the, maybe he could like hold Leclerc back or something, but he but he'd be trying to hold Leclerc back anyway. You know what I mean? There's not really a viable scenario in which he can get out the way to allow Perez to score more points, which would secure the second in the championship. So that's what I think, Jenny. Uh, yes, I see what you mean. Uh, I'm sure there are circumstances, if you look at what Perez has done in the past for his teammate when he's been battling for a championship, there are circumstances in which like he might what, be able though? to like help. But, like, but like a pit stop strategies and just holding up Leclerc potentially and being a, a bit in the way to let Perez get down the road a bit more. Who knows what will happen? But my question was going to be to Sam. Um, both of you can answer it if you want to do that. Um, it is, I don't want to. Well, you haven't had the question yet. You might be drawn by it. <laughs> um, if, if the team say to Verstappen, OK, team orders, switch places, regardless of whether it's helpful or not, let's say, is, is Verstappen ignoring team orders again? That's kind of what uh, you seem uh, to suggest, Sam. I'm not, I'm not suggesting that. Um, but what are you suggesting? No, <laughs> if, if Max Verstappen... All I'm saying is if Max Verstappen can win this race... Max Verstappen will go out and do everything he can to secure a win. Because, kind of as Jack said, it doesn't really matter. If, if, if Max Verstappen goes and, and wins the race, um, it, it doesn't matter where Sergio Perez finishes, as long as he finishes in front of Charles Leclerc. Max can't really help him. So that's probably what Max is thinking. He'll be thinking, well, if I'm gone and disappeared up the road, I can't help him, so that's what I'll do. That's, that, that will be Max Verstappen's head place right now. Yeah, agreed. Uh, 11 minutes and five seconds to go. And uh, everybody out on circuit, bar Verstappen, Vettel and Ricardo. But the engine you just heard fire up is Max Verstappen's. New set of soft tyres. 
as he joins the circuit. And tyre-wise, Norris is out on a used set, as is Esteban Ocon. And uh, I imagine Vettel and Ricardo. well, either they will go out on a used set or they will just do one run, I would have thought, in this final part of qualifying. 10 minutes and 34 seconds left on the clock. And it is Hamilton who's out on circuit first of all, so he's going to be the first driver to, to set a lap time. That's the sound you can hear of the Mercedes engine just coming into the final corner at turn 16, lines it up, boots the throttle, and gets going down towards turn one. What happened? Yeah, Max's car had a little problem. Still in the garage, just getting going now. We do our thing, you know your targets. Hmm, now so was. it seems as if Sergio Perez was looking for a bit of a toe off his teammate and coincidentally Max's car had a problem so couldn't do it. Hmm. Mm. Mm, okay. Mm, interesting. Interesting. We'll see whether anything comes out of that. Uh, Hamilton through the first sector is quicker than George Russell by six hundredths of a second. Turns into the left-hander of turn six, the chicane halfway along the back straight little slide and then gets back on his way it's not a bad first sector actually for Hamilton compared to what Leclerc managed comes through the middle sector now and it's a 36.5 that is six tenths down on Perez in that middle sector which is all of that straight that slide really hurt him Jackie he had to come out of the throttle then back on again and the Mercedes is already weak in that sector hopefully he can rescue it in sector three as he has been doing time and time again this weekend nine minutes and five seconds on the clock Hamilton looking pretty quick at the moment as he comes into the final couple of corners. Out across the line. Cuts the timing beam and it's a 1 minute 24.6. So when he finds a tenth compared to his Q2 time, George Russell uh, goes slower. Does a 1 minute 24.694. Now he found three tenths but still slower than Hamilton by less than a tenth of a second. Sainz and Leclerc in the Ferraris are both going quicker. Verstappen has just started his lap. Perez is halfway around his lap, and this is where he'll start to pick up time in the middle sector, fighting it. Leclerc as he uh, comes through turn 14. The Armco barrier there waiting to gobble you up on the exit, as it did with Nicholas Latifi last year, but no such troubles for Leclerc, who goes quickest by three tenths of a second. Carlos Sainz follows him through in the Ferrari, and Sainz goes quicker than Leclerc by about a tenth. Well, six hundredths of a second. Signs ahead of Leclerc. And it's three tenths back to Hamilton in third. Russell in fourth. Perez has done the fastest middle sector of anyone. He's into the final sector now. Down through the gears, into third. And coaxes it through turn 12. Up over the off-camber left-hander of turn 13. And then 14. All becomes sort of one long corner. Verstappen is a little down on Perez after the middle sector. Slide for Perez on the exit. And he goes second. Doesn't manage to beat Carlos Sainz. Carlos Sainz is on provisional pole, but here comes Verstappen. He's got a couple more corners to go. This is only the first run of qualifying, so this won't necessarily be the definitive run. But Verstappen is looking quick. Through turn 16, the final right-hander comes across the line and his provisional pole for Verstappen, three tenths clearer than anyone else. Three tenths ahead of Sainz and Perez and Leclerc. Hamilton fifth, seven tenths back. Same is true of Russell in sixth. And then Ocon, Norris. Uh, in fact, Ocon is the other driver to have set the lap time. Norris back in the pits, Vettel in the pits, Ricardo in the pits. Verstappen on provisional pole. Jenny. Yeah, I've just been speaking to the team to try and work out what was going on in the garage. Now, um, Red Bull claimed that they couldn't get Max Verstappen's car started. One of the switches had deteriorated, they say. Uh, apparently, both cars had issues in that session. I've asked if it's the same issue uh, uh, for Perez or a different issue. But, um, yeah, so a, a switch deteriorated. Just like the switch for position in uh, Brazil deteriorated didn't it Verstappen on provisional poles Sainz second Perez third Leclerc fourth Hamilton and Russell the six drivers to have set representative lap times a few of you getting in touch saying Carrie saying if Sergio is ahead of Max and Charles then Max could help Checo by holding station and keeping Charles behind and trying not to beat his teammate it's a, uh, that is a fair point that could sort of be a way to help and Mark also says 
If Max is eighth and Perez is ninth and Leclerc is tenth with fastest lap, then if Max got out of the way, then then uh, and swapped for eighth place, then Perez would uh, get second. Not going to happen, but the only option. And I like it, to be fair. I, if that's the race we end up with, where they're eighth, ninth, and tenth, well, I want to know what's happened in that Abu yeah. Dhabi Grand Prix. Who's at the front? <laughs> yeah. Um, but I've. Th this is just my opinion. So please don't shoot me down, guys, if uh, you think it's wrong. But for me. I think a little bit of mind games have just been played and I think it's 1-0 to Max Verstappen in today's qualifying session. You know, when you're looking for a toe, when you think that's going to be happening for you and then you don't get it, you, you, your mind starts to wander a little bit. And now Sergio's been driving so well all qualifying sessions, so for him to make uncharacteristic mistakes in Sector 3 and not put in as good a sector one obviously his mind wasn't quite where it needed to be now he goes into this final run under pressure max is not under any pressure at all no absolutely so we did see verstappen when he was meant to go out he was looking down in his cockpit and and shaking his head um so it, it may be absolutely I may, legitimate. maybe i'm just making yeah up yeah, yeah a, no, i know it's a fair i enough. probably am i probably am everybody and i'm sorry for that but I thought I'd throw it out there. No, exactly. It, is, it does seem very convenient. There's no doubt about that. Uh, four minutes and 25 seconds on the clock. Vettel's about to put his one lap time on the board in the Aston Martin through the final corner. And Vettel goes up into seventh place. A couple of tenths shy of George Russell. And that will be his one run. Uh, but he's basically the, the, the slowest of the cars that have done a lap on new soft tyres. Ricardo is on a lap now. Uh, so, and his first sector's not bad. Middle sector coming here for Daniel Ricciardo. And he is seven tenths away from Verstappen. So he's got a shot here of Pipping Vettel. Coming now down towards the final sector, in towards turn 12. And right at turn, uh, sorry, left at turn 13 and under the hotel. Charles Leclerc and Carlos Sainz have both left the pits. Leclerc ahead of Sainz. Here comes Ricardo through the final corner. And does he get ahead of Vettel? He does not. So Vettel out qualifies Ricardo. And now it's Ocon and Norris who are the, the last to sort of fight it out for that seventh place. Well, maybe Norris has got a shot at getting ahead of the Mercedes and up into uh, fifth position, potentially. We'll have to wait and see. Just getting a replay of Carlos Sainz coming out of the final corner and being very close to track limits, not getting them deleted though Jenny I do find this fascinating just looking at Ferrari's form because as a Mercedes head out on track and um, they have had they've been nowhere until this session and all of a sudden they're, they're you know second and fourth at the moment currently with still time to go well it's sort of fallen back to how we thought it would be at the start of the weekend with Mercedes not quite there and Ferrari a little bit closer to Red Bull yeah, so I think that the track temperature with where it is now has just swayed in Ferrari's favour in comparison to Mercedes. Mercedes, I think, are now probably struggling a little bit to get the tyre in a working range, especially in the first couple of sectors. It was already on the cusp, but now it's more tricky, whereas the Ferrari has come into its own, and now the car is looking after the tyres a bit better for sector three, which is why they can extract a little bit more potential out of their prancing horse worth remembering that this session is an hour later than yesterday's free practice two session that got underway at five this one getting underway at six o'clock i wonder if that also plays into that whole temperature advantage yeah it will be cooler than uh, than it was yesterday in free practice here comes leclerc across the line and into turn one to start his final attempt at qualifying Esteban Ocon's following him across the line. Then it'll be Sainz. Then it'll be Verstappen. Then it will be Perez. So in fairness, uh, Verstappen is now ahead of Perez on the road. So it, it seems plausible that it was a genuine error on the first run now that they are in the, I guess, what Perez deemed to be the correct order on this second run. Uh, Norris through sector one quicker than Ocon. Uh, slower than Lecler Leclerc. Leclerc is eight thousandths quicker than Sainz through the first sector as he comes through the chicane halfway along that back straight and then it will be Hamilton and Russell the last drivers to start their flying laps as they come across the line now in the Mercedes 
Verstappen through sector one is quick, but not crazy quick. He's quicker than his teammate Sergio Perez, but he is uh, only a hundredth quicker than Leclerc. Norris is four tenths down on Verstappen after the middle sector. Hamilton with the fastest first sector of anyone in the Mercedes, albeit only one corner admittedly. And now he's into the middle sector where the Red Bull's straight line speed comes into its own. Leclerc through the final corner, out across the line. He goes second quickest, Charles Leclerc. A tenth slower than Max Verstappen, but Verstappen's improving and he's on the fastest middle sector of anyone. He's quicker than Perez, but oh, Perez is quicker in the middle sector than Verstappen. The fight could be on here. Norris goes up into seventh place, gets ahead of Ocon, but doesn't get ahead of the Mercedes. Perez and Verstappen are going wheel to wheel here for provisional pole position. Well, for literal pole position. It's going to be incredibly tight between these two. Perez has the advantage after the middle sector. Verstappen into the final turn. Gets on the power, out across the line. He improves at 1 minute 23.824. Perez follows him through. Can he beat his teammate? No, but it's a front row lockout for the Red Bulls. Unless Hamilton and Russell can pull some magic out of nowhere in the final couple of corners. Hamilton first across the line, and it's fifth, slower than both Ferraris, and Russell comes through and remains in sixth. Noah's Ark tomorrow, Red Bull 1-2, Verstappen ahead of Perez. Perez out qualifying Charles Leclerc by four hundredths of a second. Signs him fourth, Hamilton fifth, Russell sixth, Norris, Ocon, Vettel and Ricardo the top ten. Another pole for Max Verstappen, and a very good effort from Sergio Perez to be second on the grid. Well done, Max. That's a very good job. Well done. How did we do? Yeah, first and second. Well done. Great job. OK, good job. Yeah, that's good teamwork for that. Good teamwork for that, says Verstappen. So, yeah, you wonder, don't you, how much of a toe Perez was getting from Verstappen. Maybe because he obviously Perez was keen to go out behind. Verstappen saying good teamwork. And on the lap where Perez didn't have, wasn't behind Verstappen, he was three tenths slower. So we'll see. Maybe there wasn't much in it at all. And it was just a better lap from Perez. Hamilton had a big snap coming into the uh, left-hander of turn 14. I don't think that really would have achieved anything because he was still a quarter of a second away from Sainz. But good job again from Verstappen. Yeah, I mean, that's kind of what we expect now from Max Verstappen, double world champion. He is in supreme form. Um, Sergio Perez, radio. Bola Checo, front row for tomorrow. Brilliant job. Well done. Yeah, good job, guys. Well done. Well done to everyone. I, I think, Sergio, there'll be a tiny little bit of disappointment in there because, for me, I, I think that he at times today had the beating of Max Verstappen and that's a really rare thing to say but he's been driving really well today so for Max Verstappen who's probably had a bit of a scrappy day for uh, you know in in his books for for Max to come away with pole and Sergio to have a great day and only be second it's got to be a little bit disheartening goes up and a high five between Verstappen and Perez Third on the grid will be Charles Leclerc. Fourth will be Carlos Sainz. Fifth will be Lewis Hamilton. Russell, Norris, Ocon, Vettel and Ricardo, the top 10. And then Alonso, Sonoda, Schumacher, Stroll, Joe, the top 15. Magnussen, Gasly, Bottas, Albon and Latifi, the 20 drivers that will uh, line up on the grid for tomorrow's Abu Dhabi Grand Prix. Gets underway in uh, 22 hours time from now. And you can hear it on, what, Sports Extra? Oh, we're on Main 5 Live tomorrow. You, you can hear us on BBC Radio 5 Live, and then it's the World Cup straight after us. Oh. And we're, we're basically the opening ceremony for the, for the World Cup, Sam. <laughs> we, we are indeed. Can't wait to see it. Yeah. Uh, so we'll hear from the top three in a moment. Verstappen just handing his helmet over and getting his cap and then heading out onto the start finish straight in front of the fans that were going well a lot of them were going berserk last year the atmosphere in Abu Dhabi last year was was really quite something especially the uh, the the Supermax grandstands 
And now he is going to be talking to David Coulthard. We'll hear from our top three, Max Verstappen, Sergio Perez and Charles Leclerc, all talking to, to David Coulthard. And we're going to start with the man who's starting on pole position for the Abu Dhabi Grand Prix. The world champion of this season already. Can he round off his season with a victory? Max Verstappen. Max, great way to set yourself up for the final race of the season. Your seventh pole of this year, your 20th overall. Take us uh, on a lap round this track. Yeah, it was a bit up and down qualifying, you know, um, started off quite well. Q2 was a little bit more messy. I, I honestly, I don't know why, but at times I just, I couldn't get the grip together. Uh, but then in, uh, in Q3, it all felt a bit more normal. And uh, yeah, we had a bit of a scare. They had the, the car turned off before the first run, so to reboot everything. And then uh, we went out and uh, yeah, both of the laps were good enough. So of course, very pleased with that, but also very happy that both cars are on the front row because we know that, of course, we want to win the race, but we also want to finish second with Checo in the championship. So that's definitely a, a great start for, for tomorrow. Yeah, we heard you on the radio referring to great teamwork there out on track. You were helping Checo a little bit on the, uh, the back straight. So perfectly poised to try and control this race. Yeah, I mean, it always sounds great. Uh, for sure, today was amazing. I still expect it to be a, a good battle tomorrow, but at least we have both cars there and we, we, can, we, we can do what we want. Okay, well, Max, we'll let you enjoy that pole position and good luck for tomorrow. Thank you. And next, we will hear from Sergio Perez as he makes his way out onto the grid to chat Checo to DC. Perez, Sergio Perez. Well, it was close. You've been quick all weekend. You weren't quite able to get the pole, but second is still a good starting place for tomorrow. Yeah, it's a good starting. I think I just didn't make that, that final step in, in Q3, especially Q3 round one wasn't that good. So we were uh, a bit behind, but uh, it's good, you know, it's good to look, look out that front row for tomorrow. Um, Max did a great job also for, for me, you know, we worked together as a team really strongly on that final run. So, so yeah, looking forward to tomorrow, we, which is uh, the day that really matters. So uh, tomorrow your eyes is in trying to secure second place in the Drivers' Championship. You seem to have a lot of fan support here willing you on. Yeah, yeah thank you very much to all the fans that, that, that are here. And I, I really hope that tomorrow we can have a, a strong race. I know it's all about qualifying today, but just very briefly throw us forward. What are we expecting tomorrow race strategy-wise? Yeah, I think it's going to be a very interesting one, you know, given how, how strong... Um, Ferrari will be, Mercedes, you know, uh, with Max, it will be an interesting one tomorrow. Excellent. Well, go and uh, debrief, enjoy tonight, and we'll see you on track tomorrow. Thanks, mate. Charles, you've been the, the qualifying king this year, but unfortunately today the pace wasn't quite there. Anything more you could have done on that lap? Well, I locked up uh, in turn 6-7, but to be honest, it, it's the place we deserve today. The, the Red Bull were, were stronger. Um, but we are still quite in a good position for tomorrow. It's going to be close with, uh, with Checo for sure. And then, well, put us into that battle. There's some good places to overtake on this track, plenty of DRS zones. Seems like the Red Bulls are going to be working together. So, uh, you know, what, what's that going to do for your strategy? Well, I mean, I'm sure we can work together too with, uh, with Carlos. I have no doubt on that. And uh, we'll try to maximize the team result. We know Red Bull is a bit stronger on the Sunday, so it's going to be, uh, it's going to be tricky, but uh, we are going to give it all. And uh, hopefully we can uh, get that second place in the drivers and construct this championship. Well, yeah, just a quick reflection on that. It's been a long season, but it's been a great season for you and outright pace. Where, where is your mind at now? You're, you're ready for your, your winter holiday or you're just, ah, what could have been? I mean, first, uh, before going on holiday, we need to focus on tomorrow. Obviously, after the last two uh, very difficult years for the team, it's good to have done a step uh, forward. Um, and it will be great for the team to get that second place in the constructors, especially. So uh, I'll push for that. And then we'll go into holidays, uh, rest, and uh, hopefully come back stronger next year. Well, we wish you all the best for tomorrow. Thank you. Charles Thank Leclerc, you third place. So that's your top three for the race tomorrow then. It will be Charles Leclerc in third, Sergio Perez in second and starting in pole position, Max Verstappen looking for another win to add to what has been an incredible season of dominance really. Everybody else has fallen along the wayside. Uh, make sure you come back and join us for the race. It gets underway at one o'clock and as Jack said in commentary, it's like yeah, a moose-bouche for the whole of the World Cup. Um, and everyone here is 
pretty excited about the World Cup. Pierre Gasly, especially, who will be flying straight from here uh, to go and watch France in the World Cup. And then he said he'd go, he's going to go back for the final when France will win the World Cup. So there we go. That's his prediction. Let's see what happens. <laughs> uh, but yeah, coverage underway from one o'clock tomorrow. Of course, there'll be a podcast coming out uh, later on today. Reaction to qualifying with a checkered flag. And if you haven't already, this is the perfect opportunity to download Spygate. Uh, if you go onto your normal podcast provider, BBC Sounds, uh, and search Spygate, it's the story of the 2007 season when Hamilton and Alonso went head to head. And with all of the drama that surrounded Ferrari versus McLaren. Uh, and Pete Tong is the man narrating it. So well worth a listen if you haven't already. Uh, thanks for joining us today. This has been an IMG production for BBC Radio 5 Live.